Okay, we're, I stopped the recording mistakenly, so we're going to continue the recording here for number four. So again, let me read the question. A fast food outlet claims that the mean waiting time in line is less than 3.5 minutes. And then I ask you to write the null and the alternative hypothesis. So that is the claim right here. And I agree with what you put in the chat, guys, 3.5 minutes. Now we need some data to uh, support us in studying this claim. A random sample of 15 customers, N is 15, has a mean of 3.4 minutes, that's X bar. And a standard deviation of 0 0.6, as long as he doesn't, he say, he doesn't say population standard deviation, it's S guys. And once you put S tied to the T test, 0 0.6 minutes, right? And now I know it's a T test because it gives me S. If alpha equals 0 0.05, test the fast food outlets claim. You can cross this off. Assume that the population is normally distributed. We will have to assume that the population is normally distributed, guys, because the, uh, he gave me only a sample size less than 30, which is 15. So it's a t-test. Ready? Look how easy. If you guys know how to set these two up and you know how to state, you know, those uh, inf the information, it's very straightforward. Watch. You just go turn the calculator on. T-test. By the way, we can do that in StatCrunch. I'll show you on Wednesday how we use uh, StatCrunch to do this. So mu zero, 3.5. We're doing it against 3.5. That's the status quo, guys. That's the previous belief that we're trying to go against. Uh, X bar was, I said, let me select them here, 3.4. It is below 3.5, but not much below. So I don't know we'll be able to support the claim. Let's see. Standard deviation is 0 0.6. N is 15. And I want the students to tell me which sign do I select now? First, second, or third? Second. Okay. Second one, and I do agree. Very good. I hope, guys, that stuff is start to make sense to you. If it doesn't, just go back and review it. It should later. And let's hit calculate, guys. Or you want to draw if you want to see the visual of the p-value. Here's the p-value, guys. Oh, it's a huge. You see, when you see too much shading, when you see too much shading, that means you cannot uh, say uh, reject HO. P value is big. When P value is big, you don't reject HO. So T is negative 0 0.646. P value, let me put it again, 0 0.2645. That's a huge. And this is bigger than alpha, guys. So what's the decision, guys? Fail to reject, reject HO or fail to reject HO? It'd be fail to reject? Yeah. Because p-value is more than alpha. That will not change from now till the end of the semester. P-value less than alpha, we reject HO. P-value is more than alpha, we fail to reject HO. Try to memorize those facts, guys, or put it in a note in front of you all the time. P-value less than alpha, I would just do this if I were you guys, as I do homework and stuff. I'll put this for me. You can put the equal sign here. It will never be equal. And then you put the other choice, then. So you don't mix them up. Do 
you are allowed to use uh, handwritten notes on the test. So if you just want to put on an index card, something like that and have it in front of you, that's fine with me. Uh, p-value less than alpha reject HO, p-value more than alpha fail to reject HO. But what's imp more important than this guys that you know how to compare. For example, here is, a, here is alpha 0 0.05 here. Here is an example of a p-value which is less. That is less. And here is alpha 0 0.05. Here is an example of p-value which is bigger. You guys agree with this? That's a bigger. That's an example, two examples, okay? So, fail to reject HO. How do you interpret your decision? You start there. Okay, who's gonna tell me what's the next? There's what? There is or there is not? There's not. There is not. Enough evidence. Enough evidence. At. The 0, 0.0, uh, what was alpha five, five level of significance? Two. Now my math lab is giving you, oh, select reject or support. Well, you know your claim guys is in HA, you must select the word support. To support the claim. that I'm gonna copy it guys right here look after that I'm just gonna copy the entire claim mean waiting time and line is less than 3.5 minutes we're telling the fast food outlet that your claim is wrong, probably wrong. Probably you're lying to people, misleading people because we could not support their claim. When you don't support their claim, you can go back to them and tell them, we think that your claim is not valid. Go back and revisit your claim or whatever you said. That's, if you supported their claim, then probably their claim is valid. But here you say there is not enough evidence to support their claim. All right, guys, why don't... Number five, Carolina Tobacco Company advertised that its best selling non filtered cigarettes contains at most uh, 40 milligram of nicotine. But Consumer Advocate magazine ran tests of 10 randomly selected cigarettes and found that the amounts are 47.3, etc. So, without, before even we continue doing anything, guys, let's put the data set into L1. So let me just do that. You go to stat, edit. Okay, I have some data there. Um, I'm gonna clear L1. Here's how you clear a list, guys. Just go to L2 and hit clear and then enter. So now it's nice and clear, 47.3. Okay, so we got the data in L1, and let's continue on reading. It is a serious matter to charge that the company advertising is wrong. So the magazine editor chooses significance level alpha is 0 0.01. Can the editor prove that the mean nicotine level is greater than 40 milligram? So that's the claim, guys. It's the magazine editor is making a claim that the mean nicotine level is greater than 40 milligrams. Assume nicotine levels are normally uh, distributed. And when you make a claim, guys, when you accuse somebody of something or wrongdoing, you better be able to verify it. Otherwise, the person can go back after you uh, later. And this is the same thing that why they're saying it's a serious matter to do this. So, how would you state the null and the alternative hypothesis? Can you guys help me out? So mean, mean. What sign goes into, since it's greater than guys, would you agree with me that this is the sign? 
Okay. And that goes in the bottom. Yeah. yeah. And this one is 40. Now, maybe some of you will tell me, well, Mr. Bezzi, I'm reading the company, the tobacco company is saying that their cigarettes is at most 40, and this is at most less than or equal. Why not the claim is in HO? The claim is whomever asked the question. The company is not questioning their claim. It's the editor of the magazine who is asking the question. So we follow, you know, the question. Can the editor prove that the mean is greater than 40? So that should be the claim. T-test, guys. It didn't give you sigma, it's a T-test. And I think we're ready to do the T-test. Now we have the data in L1. Watch. Go to stat, tests, number two. So section 7.3, guys, you can tie it to number two here. Data, input is in data. So I'll put this note here in the exercise. Okay, what we're we testing against, which number, 40? And what's my list? My list should be in L1. Probably yours shows L1. Don't change this one. Frequency, leave it at one, always. And can you guys tell me what sign do I use before I hit calculate? First, second, or third? Third. I agree. It's right there, guys. I'm looking at it. Just copy it. And I can do calculate or draw. It's your preference, guys. When I see the p-value in action, I'll show you the p-value in action. It's small. So p-value low, HO must go. All right. But it's not very, very small. It's bigger, actually. So uh, 2.746. That's T. And p value, let me write it down. It's zero point. Let me show it to you again. Zero point zero one one three. And here, data input is data. So you have to use that put the data. Okay. We're comparing with alpha, which is zero point zero one, guys. So what do I put here? Greater than or less than? Zero, zero, one, one. Now I have another one, I have nothing, that means zero. So that's bigger. And if a p-value is bigger than alpha, what's the decision, guys? Yes, can someone tell me? You should know them by heart now. Yeah. Fail to reject HO. I might on the test guys give you the very same question, but instead of alpha B 0.01, I'll make it 0.05. If I'll make alpha 0.05 guys, what will happen here? What will your decision be? If alpha is 0.05, you end up with less than sign. You see alpha is very, very important what you compare to then you end up rejecting HO. So we'll change the entire problem, the value of alpha. Okay, interpret your decision. Remember, your claim is an HA. So we're gonna use the word support or not support here. Since we fail to reject HO, here's how you start, guys. There is not enough evidence at the 0 0.01 level of significance. Two, since the claim is in HA, guys, we have to use the word support to support. We're not supporting, we say we cannot support because we say there is not enough evidence to support the magazine editors 
claim that the mean amount of nicotine is bigger than 40. So I think the tobacco company can go uh, can go after the magazine now and tell them you're 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 uh, you're uh, publishing you're publishing wrong information about our uh, brand you know just of tobacco mean amount of nicotine is more than 40 milligrams yeah, it's very, very serious. So you have to be very careful when you make a claim. You better be able to support it. If you can support it, better not do it. You know, just try to find a different claim that you can support. And this is the case here uh, with this question here, as you can see, guys. And you notice how consistent I am with using there is, there is not. As I told you, I will be consistent throughout the semester, just using the same language. Uh, uh, throughout. Any questions? Okay. Now here, with I see the word reject in the chat. We don't use the word reject because the claim is in HA. We have to use the word uh, support. All right. Uh, now this is uh, that this is section 7.3 testing the mean when sigma is unknown 7.2 guys was about testing the mean when sigma is known and section 7.1 was just an introduction to hypothesis testing what remains in this chapter is to test the proportion and the standard deviation as i told you for the last section i'm gonna do it but it will not be included on the test but this section yes that's an important one when we test uh uh, the proportion. Um, okay, let's let's do this. Okay, let's uh, let's let me do it through an example. So now it's about the proportion, not the mean anymore. The engineering school at a major university claims that 20% of its graduates are women. You see, it's a percentage, so it's a P. It can't be the mean anymore. In a graduating class of 210 students, just like the confidence interval, guys, you give you N and X, so that's N. 46 were women, that's X. Does this suggest that the school is believable? So is the claim of the school believable? So what do they claim? They claim that the percentage of school uh, engineers who uh, graduate as engineers are women, 20% are women. So HO and HO guys will be P and P. Can, can someone tell me what do you think the claim is gonna be? It's gonna be against 20% on the other side. What would be the signs guys? You either has to choose these two or these two or the last two. It's one of the three, always one of the three. You don't have choices here. What would it be? Equal and not equal. I agree. Because it says is 20% of its graduates are women. It didn't say less, it didn't say more. That means equal or not equal. And that's the claim. All right. Um, one second. In order to perform a hypothesis test on the proportion, guys, there are two conditions that must be met. If they, if while doing the exercises, guys, if they ask you to verify the conditions, I'm going to show you how. If not, you just go to step one, step two, step three, etc. These are the conditions. You have to verify that NP is greater than or equal to five, and then NQ is greater than or equal to five. How do you verify that? N is 210. And P is the value in the alternative hypothesis, which is 20%. So how would you write 20% as a decimal 0 0.20? Well, do you guys agree with me that this is bigger than five? Yeah, it is bigger. If you use your calculator and find 210, let me just clear, times 0 0.2, you get 42, which is bigger than five. 
Q, guys, is the opposite of P, the failure. So P is a success, Q is a failure. So it's P 20%, what would be Q, guys? 80%. Yep. And definitely this is gonna be bigger than five. So we're, we're clear to go ahead with the test. Look, it's 168, bigger than five. So both conditions of the test are satisfied. So this is the first step. We can go ahead with the test. P is 20%, uh, P is not 20%. The test is statistic. Here is the formula for it. There is a formula here. Do you have to do this by hand? No, but I'm gonna show you later. We can use the calculator to do the entire test, but this is the formula, just like the other two have a formula. It's a P hat minus P divided by square root of PQ over N. And let me show you how to state this one. P hat is the sample proportion, guys. It's X over N. So that's a P hat from the sample. What proportion of women from the total number of graduates so it was 46 divided by 210, which is if you do the math, 0 0.219. So let me show you how to enter this information. 0 0.219 minus P is the value from the null hypothesis, always just like a mu. So 0 0.20 divided by square root of 0 0.2, that's a P. Q, you told me is 0 0.8, you are correct. And then divide by 210. And let me just do it. Here's how I would do it if I'm using the calculator here. So we're not using the function or test function of the calculator yet. You will see, we're gonna do that in a second, but just show you how to do the calculations. So you do 0 0.219 minus 0 0.20, close parentheses, divide by, open the square root, put 0 0.2 times 0 0.8, divide by 210 and exit. That's it, that should give you so I got 0 0.688. And if you change it to a decimal, guys, it will be 0 0.69. Uh, sorry, two decimal places 0 0.69. However, you don't need to do any of this. This is how you do the calculation by hand. This is a proportion test. And the only proportion test that you can use on the calculator is right there, guys. Can someone see it on the screen? It's on the first screen. So we used one, we used two. There is one more we'll be using here. Which one? Or section 7. .5. Number five. Number five. It's a proportion Z test. One means one sample. Yes, it is one prop Z test. No confusion here whether you use Z or T. It's a proportion. It's only the only test, guys. And look how easy it is to use this test. So we're gonna go to number five. Okay. It's asking me, what value did you state in the null hypothesis? I'll tell the calculator I put 20%. It's asking me for X. X is the lower one, which is 46. I put 46. It's asking me for N. N is 210. And it's asking me to choose the alternative sign, guys, not equal to. You notice I'm not doing anything different from the previous. Uh, sorry, I have to go back. Oops, sorry. Enter. Look. And draw or calculate if you wish. There you go. You see, I got Z equals 0 0.69. So we were correct. So that means the formula that I showed you here, this is what's programmed into the calculator, guys. And P hat is the X over N, guys, as you notice, the one that we did earlier. And what's the P value? That's what I want, 0 0.490. I wanna show you, actually, if I do a visual, you're gonna see a big shaded region here. 
if p value low ho is must go but if p value is high ho will stay we cannot reject ho watch see you guys the p value it's a huge on both sides 4902 And he wants me to sketch the p value. I can sketch just what I saw there. This is a two tailed uh, guys. And if you want to put the value here, this is a 0 0.69. It's an area to the left and to the right of zero, negative 0 0.69 and 6.9. And it's a z test, a z. So a z here. That's the p value. And why we're shading two areas? Because it's a two-tailed test. Okay, guys, alpha is 0 0.05. Would you guys agree with me that this is bigger than alpha? What's the decision? Can a student tell me what's the decision when p-value is more than alpha? It's more than it. So it will be what? Fail to reject HO. Great. And interpret the decision. Okay. Since we had fail, we start with there is not. Look, I'm going to be consistent, guys. I'm not going to change anything. Enough evidence. At the 5%. Level of significance. Two. Okay. Let's put... Which word do we choose, guys? There is not enough evidence at the 5% level of significance too. Remember, the claim is in HO this time, not in HA. So which word is it going to be? Support. No. Oh. Reject. Reject the claim because the claim is in HO. We don't use the word support when the claim is in HO. So there is not enough evidence to reject the claim uh, of the engineering school. That 20% of its graduates are women. So we're saying that we cannot reject their claim. We're not saying that their claim is valid. All we're saying that we cannot reject it doesn't mean that we accept it, but we just cannot reject it. We don't have any evidence against it. That's what we're saying. So there is not enough evidence at the 5% level of significance to reject the claim of the engineering school that 20% of its graduates are women. You just copy it and paste it here. So this is, this is how you test uh, the proportion, guys. I'm going to do another one with the proportion. And there you go. I think this is a real problem. I think, I don't know where I got it from, but this is probably real data here about uh, Shaquille O'Neal. Any Boston Celtics fan or Icarville knows that Shaquille O'Neal, one of the NBA's most dominant centers, for the last 20 years, always had difficulty shooting free throws. Over the course of his career, his overall made free throw percentage is 53.3%. So he only gets 53.3% of those free uh, throws. During this off season, Shaq is working with an assistant coach on his free throw technique. During the first five games of the next season, Shag made 26 of his 39 free throw attempts. So he was successful 26 times out of 39. Do these results provide convincing evidence that Shaq has significantly improved his, throw, his free throw shooting? Carry out a significance test at alpha equals 0.05. Okay, guys, what would be HO and what would be 
H A. I'm gonna write them twice on this page and the next page. P and P, it's a percentage. We want him to increase what we know that he, we know that he does 53.3%, but we're trying to see if he was able to increase that. How would you interpret that in simples? What would be the signs, guys? Is it practicing? to see if he can increase his 53.3%. Greater than, yes. We wanna know increase means bigger than guys. It's bigger than 53.3%. That is correct, that's the claim. And then the null will be less than 53.3% or equal to. That is the claim. That's why he's doing the practice. That's why he's working with an assistant coach to see if he can increase, uh, improve his free throw shooting. Improve means go bigger beyond what he has. So step one, I'll write him down one more time, guys, H-O. P is less than or equal 53.3%. And we're interested in this one, bigger than 53.3%, and that's the claim. Okay, what's X and what's N here? All we need X and N and alpha. It says, Shag made 26 of his 39 free uh, throw uh, attempts. So what's 26 and what's 39, guys? Do you agree with me that the 39 should be N and the 26 should be X? And he wants us to do it at alpha equals 0 0.05. This is all what you need for the calculator. It's a Z test, a proportion Z test. Is that one prop Z tests? All right. Oops, I did two props Z test. That's chapter eight, it's still early. Okay, so it's again 0 0.533. Yes. You write it as a decimal here. It's a we're doing this is the null hypothesis. And X guys is 26. That's a 39. And we want it greater than. And if you ask me, how do I know? It's, it's not magic, it's this sign right here. I'm gonna change the color here. Let's do red this time. And would you like to see the p-value in action? Let's show you the p-value, draw. There you go. So Z is 1.67. And p value is zero point. Let me show it to you guys. Zero four seven one. And alpha is zero point zero five. Okay, let me put three signs there. The one of the two signs, and tell me which one is it gonna be. First or second? Make it easier on you. Do you guys agree with me that 0 0.0471 is less than 0 0.05? And look how you determine that. If you got confused, you start zero is zero, dot is the dot, zero is zero. Second digit after the decimal is four, second digit is uh, five. That means four is less than five, that it's less. The whole thing is less. Then reject HO. Good, this time we're rejecting HO. You start, when you reject HO guys, you start with there is enough evidence at the 5% level of significance to, okay, I'm gonna quiz you again guys. The claim is in HA and I'm gonna put the two words
which word is going to be? Support. Support. Very good. Now you're getting this. Because the claim is in HA, we use the word support to support the claim. That. And just copy it and paste it, guys. I'm not asking you to memorize the claim. Just copy it. What is the claim? The check has significantly improved his throw through uh, shootings. Or you can say that the proportion is more than 53.3%. You can write it in words or in symbols. So that means the practice is working. Improved is free throw shooting. That concludes this question. I hope that you guys can are seeing the consistency and how uh, I'm trying to show you that whatever I do in one problem, I'm just doing the same thing in the uh, second one. So it's very much consistent, guys. Okay, one more, and then we'll wrap this up. Eight. A drug manufacturer claims that if fewer than 10%, what's the fewer? What sign is fewer, you guys? Less than. Yeah, so you know this is going to go in an alternative hypothesis. I agree. Fewer than 10% of patients who take it's a new drug for treating Alzheimer's disease will experience nausea. In a random sample of 250, so N is 250, 23%, 23 patients experience nausea, so that's 23. Perform a significance test at a 5% significance level to test this claim, so alpha is 5%. Okay, guys, look, that should be easy. Fewer means less than. So that should be P is less than 10% right here. And that's the claim. Now you ask me, can I write 0 0.1? Yes, you can put 0 0.1 if you like instead of 10%. And you guys know what the uh, null hypothesis is going to be. That's the claim. And it's a proportion Z test. He didn't ask me to check the requirements of the test so that we assume they're met unless, so NP is greater than five and NQ is greater than five. If you check, you, they're gonna work. And let's use the calculator guys, right away to the calculator. That's one of the easiest tests if you know what, what you are given here. So we're gonna go stat tests. Uh, number five, all of you should have this on the calculator. And it's again 0 0.110. Uh, X, never put X the larger number, guys. X is always the smaller number, number of successes. 250. And do you guys agree with me that this is the sign and the alternative? So that should be the middle one. All right. Calculate or draw. The p-value is going to be on the left this time. Watch. There you go. It's a huge p-value. Oh, wow. So z is negative 0 0.42. Redo those problems, guys, once we're done today or later or tomorrow, just to have a sense of this so they start making sense to you. And compare the answers with my answers. And the P is 0 0.3366, which is, of course, bigger than alpha. When you see too much shading, guys, that's going to be bigger than alpha for sure, because your alpha will never exceed 10%. So do you guys agree with me that the decision is failed to reject HO? And let's write the conclusion. OK. I'm going to put. Okay, there is or there is not. How do I start? It's fail to reject HO, guys. So what do I start with? There is not. Yep, you're getting it. Enough evidence. 
at the 0 0.05 level of significance with repetition, guys, you should try to memorize it. It's very easy. Once I'm repeating, you know, just myself so many times, so it should be straightforward later. Two, now the big decision, because you guys, you mess up this word, this step, you will get zero on it if you put the wrong word here, because it's gonna give you a totally different meaning. Okay, the claim is in HA, what's the word? Is it gonna be support or reject? Reject. You're confused, you're still it's confused. Support. support. The claim is in HA, we never use the word reject in the conclusion. If the claim is in HO, we use the word reject in the conclusion. Keep that in mind. So to support the claim that fewer, I'm just gonna copy it guys, than 10% of patients I'm not making anything up, I'm just copying here. Who take a new drug for treating? If you're doing work online, you probably not have to write it, but you're doing an assignment, you have to write that. You just select it online for treating Alzheimer's. Oh, sorry. disease will experience nausea. So we're not, so that means their claim probably is not valid. They say less than 10%, I think they're misleading us. It could be more than 10% because we say we cannot support their claim. When you don't support their, their claim, that means their claim is suspicious. That's what it says right here. So this is how uh, we do this.